Welcome to Landlord Diaries, where we talk about midterm rentals and the opportunities behind them. We'll share landlord stories, talk about maximizing investment potential, and discuss how to live the very best landlord life. This podcast is proudly brought to you by Furnished Finder, the place for everything midterm rentals. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Hi, everyone. We are so thankful to have you guys as part of our network and our audience on the Landlord Diaries, Furnish Finders podcast. And you've got your Furnish Finder team here, Kelly Bailey and Katie Lyon, coming from the Austin, Texas area and Denver, Colorado areas. Katie, Katie, how are you doing today and what do we have going on today? Hello, hello, I'm good. Today we get to talk with Jeff and Jeff is from uh, Indiana and he has a unique business where he builds barns and barn dominiums and all sorts of um, exciting, you know, Midwestern properties. But he also has a farmhouse that he rents out by the room to traveling medical professionals. Um, and he has a different take on things than a lot of our, our landlords. He's more of a, a budget friendly, um, housing provider and it's really interesting to talk to him to get his perspective on how he does things a little bit differently mm -hmm. so that'll be interesting for everyone to hear so please enjoy this episode with Jeff and don't forget to like Kelly said like subscribe comment if you have questions we do keep track of those questions and try to get you the best answers we can mm -hmm. we would also love your review and don't forget that this episode and all of them are brought to you by Furnish Finder where you can list your property for only $99 a year and I totally forgot to talk about it on the episode for those ladies out there, Fort Wayne, Indiana is the home of Vera Bradley, the purse company. Mm. Ooh. So All right. Fancy. Enjoy. Today, we talk with Jeff Bauer in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Jeff has a four bedroom farmhouse. He rents by the room exclusively to traveling medical professionals and a one bedroom, one bath cottage. Jeff owns a contracting business called Bauer and Sons, specializing in accessory dwelling, accessory buildings, external home remodeling, and barn dominiums. Jeff, we are excited to talk with you today. How are you doing? I'm doing super because today is actually my birthday. Hey, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, Any big so my plans? wife made me. Uh, my wife made me uh, my one of my favorite meals: meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Ah, oh, so I've good. never heard such an Indiana thing. <laughs> <laughs> what that's do you want your birthday? At, meatloaf I, and mashed potatoes. <laughs> yep, that's my go-to at Cracker it. Barrel: mashed potatoes, dumplings. Mmm, so good. Well, comfort. Yes, comfort food is the best. Uh, well, let's talk about why you chose a farmhouse in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and why you rent by the room on Furnish Finder? Well, I chose the farmhouse because it was the perfect strategic location for me to find a location for my business. Um, because where I'm sitting right now was actually a pole barn, and this is connected. So it's this big two and a half acre property. And the farmhouse is just right out back here. And so it actually helped me strategically to rent this home out and basically help to cover me as a small business uh, so that my company didn't have to pay the full mortgage. Nice. That's great. And mm -hmm. so why room rentals? Uh, the room rental. So, well, I previously used to operate uh, and I did whole homes using the Airbnb model, mm -hmm. um, platform Airbnb and VRBO. And I went to single rooms because a friend of mine told me about it, that he was a travel nurse. And once I found out and I, I kind of had to scratch my head a little bit, I, I, I wasn't sure how it would work. You know, it honestly, it seems a little bit odd, but once he told me about it, he was like, oh, no, everybody's going to get along. They're going to love it. You know, this and that. Everybody's like a little roommate. And I said, let me just go for it. So I went that route because it makes the most sense. And I happened to be 
like one mile from the largest hospital, you know, up here in Northern Indiana. Nice. Yeah. So has it been hard for you to find tenants who want to rent only by the room and not the whole place? And how have you had a time, like, how has it gone for you as far as like making sure that everyone gets along? Uh, good question. So I've been running the house now for a couple of years. And um, to answer the first question, no, it's actually been really easy. Um, I find that it's a cultural thing. And I, I used to teach classes on culture and I've traveled a lot. So I find that it's interesting the types of people and what their backgrounds are that are a little more accustomed, who are willing to say, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It takes a certain type of person to mm -hmm. say, sure, I'll share a home with, with other people. Mm -hmm. But I haven't had any problems finding individual renters. Um, at this point, I've had at least 20, you know, 22, 25 people come to the home, have not had any issues. Uh, I had one grumpy lady, but, you know. Not bad. <laughs> I didn't think so. Because you've been um, doing this about two years, right? So about 20 uh, roommates coming through over the last couple of years? Yeah, I've rented with Furnish Finder. Uh, I got on the Furnish Finder platform about two years ago mm -hmm. um, and and then got another house uh, listed on Furnish Finder. And then we're going to be hopefully closing on a duplex that I'll also list the Furnish Finder here in um, maybe about a month or so. Nice. But I've been in the short term, long term rental game here for five, six years. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the friend that told you about Furnish Finder is working on a Mercy ship, isn't he? He is. Yeah, he was a travel nurse himself, and that's how he found it. He went and traveled, you know, a lot, you know, all over through COVID, saved up his money, and now he's doing some humanitarian work. So he's a good guy. Awesome. Yeah. And I want to put it out there, if anyone is curious to see the farmhouse, as you call it, um, we'll put the link in the show notes, but it's so cute. It's very much the farmhouse that if you're picturing a farmhouse in your head right now, that's exactly what it is. But by renting mm -hmm. by the room, you make it very affordable for the guests, correct? So tell us a little bit about that and how, you know, you think that has, um, made an impact on the on the type of tenants that you're able to get and keeping it really affordable for those medical travelers. And this jumps us into, uh, instead of doing landlord logistics today, we're doing marketing matters and how to stand mm. out. And Jeff does a really good job making his property stand out by the way he handles those prices and move-in fees and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Okay, so um, the first thing is I like to make things super easy for people. I try to be no hassle and I'm really upfront with people. Uh, I'm looking for, be honest with me. I'll be honest with you. If there's a problem, I'll come over and fix it. Um, I tell people upfront, this is not a five-star hotel. This is just, it's a basic kind of an old home. I remodeled it. Um, you're gonna, here's what I can offer you. Um, and here's what I can't offer you. So I start with that platform obviously through this method, you know, everything is furnished, you know, people just want to know is the water clean is there what good water pressure. And, and so, yeah, you know, it's filtered water. I've got a nice washer and dryer on site. And those are all the things that people are really looking for. Um, you're offering safety and a big connect point that I think is overlooked sometimes because I actually have my office here and I have a couple staff members. We kind of are this little, community and that helps people to feel safe when when they know hey i'm i'm always on campus you know campus you know <laughs> anyway but, yeah. i'm here on the property during the daytime right and we can take care of any kind of problems but my marketing has been um no hassle fees i'm not I, you know i'm not looking for big deposits or i i actually quit doing deposits i quit doing um even additional fees for cleaning, I just, I price the rent well enough to say, here's what I can offer. So we're going to give you once a month professional house cleaning. They're going to come in and clean the common spaces. Um, and then a huge marketing thing that everybody knows about, and sometimes it's overlooked, is you have to work on your reviews. 
and and you you've got to get people and yes. be aggressive with it. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So, what tips do you have for those that aren't very good at getting reviews on Furnish Finder? Um, make then you you make it easy for the person. So, I actually had a couple of uh, ladies that were kind of like grandmas. One one gal was in her seventies, and they were so great. And I spent a lot of time over there chatting with them, and that kind of um, those are the type of people that you want to make it super easy. If you had a good connection with them, you want to go on to Furnish Finder, find the direct link and actually text it or email it right to them and say, hey, this is super helpful for me. Would you please write me a five-star review? Mm -hmm. For sure. And tip, I re I went to send a review to someone recently and for and I looked at it from their perspective and forgot that Furnish Finder asked for your dates of move in and move out. So oh. if you can, especially for those that are there like six months or so, get those dates for them. Otherwise, they're going to pause, say, I'll do this later and may not come back to it. So good tip for everybody. Yeah. Anything to make it easy for everyone is always, always a good thing to do. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Um, you know, everyone is looking for those reviews mm -hmm. and they at least give me some sort of positive, uh, you know, start to, to get going because it does help people to, to feel to feel safe. For sure. So another part of your business is building these barn dominiums and, mm -hmm. and really unique properties. Have you ever thought of or have you ever in the past used those to rent to travel nurses or medical professionals? I have not because I, because as a contractor, I'm building for clients. Okay. Yeah. And the majority, I've, I've built a handful of homes here in Indiana and Ohio, but my real main specialty is working on accessory buildings, barns. And, and when people build barns, you know, we, you can build a, you know, a $20,000 barn to keep your car tractor to, you know, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar, you know, right. building. Yeah, you, right. So maybe if we ever get in the business of midterm rentals for livestock, then you could be a really good <laughs> landlord there. <laughs> I tell you, the, the equestrian world and all that has been, you know, the, hey, they, you they, never they, know. Yeah. Look out for it. <laughs> but I actually, so the duplex I'm going to be purchasing and turning into a midterm rental. Um, that was a project that we renovated and we actually brought in a lot of cool, um, you know, barn, the barn world has kind of exploded in the housing industry, that style. So we brought a lot of those elements into the duplex. Awesome. The, the unique housing experiences are definitely kind of blowing up. Everyone wants to kind of see and be a part of something different. Yep, for sure. So Jeff, to continue on the pricing conversation, you do mm -hmm. something special. You find, uh, you have your guests help you find your next renter as well. So how does mm -hmm. that work and how many people actually take you up on that offer? Um, so, you know, running, running a rental is, is like running your own business. And so, you know, it, you got to operate with a little faith and, and you trust like, okay, I'm going to find a, I'm going to find a tenant. But I think everybody out there has been at that place where you go, Oh no, I am, I'm going to have a vacancy for a while. Or what if I don't get somebody? Um, so I just kick them a little incentive and say, Hey, if you would help me find a, a tenant, it's kind of a combo, maybe a little bit of not, not fear tactic, but Hey, Maybe you're meeting with people that you're nursing with, and it would be really helpful. Hey, if you find somebody that you like to work with and they're a travel nurse, invite them if they'd like to live here. And then I just tell them, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you $100 off your rent next month. I love that because room rentals, mm -hmm. you are matching people together. So what better way to match people together than a natural, organic conversation that with someone that they already enjoy spending time with? That's so great. And then... All of your rooms are shared bathrooms as well, I believe. So, and I think your longest vacancy uh, for your room rentals over the last couple of years has has been two weeks. Like that's your longest vacancy. So, how does the how do those conversations work where you find the right person uh, that wants to share a bath with someone? You know, every time where you don't really have vacancies. Yeah. 
that's the number one question that people ask mm -hmm. because for you know it's our private space mm -hmm. so people are always wondering you know what i mean who am i going to be sharing this bathroom mm -hmm. with but when you let people know hey you know they're going to be working a different shift or the way that the house is set up you've got two rooms upstairs and one bathroom and then two down with a with another bathroom um but once people kind of get that in their mind like hey most of, most people went to college. They understand, you know, a shared bathroom with one other person is not that big of a deal. Um, we actually just crossed a new threshold uh, for the first time, and so I I have um, I have my first male who's in the house. Okay, so you've had all females up to this point. Correct. Okay. I've had all females. Um, I've got my first male, and then we even have our first. Um, non medical staff mm. who's moving mm. in tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. Exciting. Interesting. So do you do any special types of, um, you know, do you make sure that you talk on the phone with each potential tenant or do you do any type of kind of like informal screening just to make sure that like they pass the vibe check because you're putting them 100%. in the house with other people like in theory if i have a one bed place that's its own unit i don't care if the person is a jerk necessarily because they're living alone but once you you know we've talked to some some landlords who have interesting approaches and strategies to making sure that that you know kind of mutual respect situation stays good yeah they have to pass the vibe check for sure um <laughs> You, um, the last line, I have a one page contract and the last line I have on my contract is you are committing to living a drama free life for your roommates and for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you drama in the house. Nobody wants it. You're here just to chill out. That's basically, but every room has a, has its own TV, you know, so most people are just going to come home and watch, um, and then we get a lot of people, it makes it really easy because a lot of the people, my niche are people who live, you know, within a three to four hour radius. And so they already have a home. They're coming over here to do contract work. They're here for mm -hmm. three to four days and then they're gone for three to four days. Mm -hmm. So that makes it, yeah, that makes it super easy. But yeah. um, I always talk to people on the phone, big on that. I'll even FaceTime people and and then here's one thing to backtrack on the marketing. If people haven't done this, um, shoot a video. It's so easy to use video and just do a walkthrough video of your property. Um, you can do a voiceover on iMovie. It doesn't have to be some high class thing. It's so easy just to just to walk through. Here's the bedrooms. Hey, we're thank you for coming into our city to help out our hospitals and to be part of our nursing staff. We really appreciate that. And everybody has a YouTube account. You can upload that video onto YouTube and you make it private. So mm -hmm. it's not out there for public consumption. And that private link, you can actually take that link, embed it into the Furnish Finder listing, or I'll take that link and just text it to a person who's curious. And that's, that's one thing that's really nice about the Furnish Finder platform, because we genuinely want everyone to book the way that works best for them. We want you guys to communicate the, the way that works best for you. We, you don't have to stay on our platform, right? That's why we, we do, we give phone numbers and we give email addresses is because we want this to work well for the traveler and the landlord. We don't just say, okay, you have to communicate on our platform or mm -hmm. there's not a video on here. And then whatever it's put your link, mm -hmm. put whatever you need to, to make that a successful relationship. It is amazing. I love that about Furnish Finder because like there's so many cool links you can provide to things in the mm -hmm. area or your favorite spots or yeah. your personal website. So yeah, that's I've actually done a, um, a Matterport before on uh -huh. a property, which uh -huh. is where you can kind of do the walkthrough where like, you know, you click and it acts like you walk there and you can get mm -hmm. like a 3D yep. view of it. Um, and I other other websites that I have listed properties on in the past, they will strip that link out because mm -hmm. they'll say, nope, we don't want right. any potential tenant or landlord going anywhere outside of our four right. walls of our website. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. definitely not how we do things, right? We just want you to find the tenant, find the landlord, make it a good relationship and make it work. So um, that's a really, a really good way to do that.
I, I just found that 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 website, the or the app, the Matterport, and and I'm like, oh, I'm absolutely gonna try to embed these on on all my properties. For sure. Yeah, I actually have used it for a long term property because we had someone who was interested in the property, but they were out of state. And they were like, can my sister in law, you know, visit and I was like, absolutely. But also, here's this if that'll help you. So it's one of those things, you know, pictures and video, we cannot say enough about just getting even even like you said, you know, your property is you're not trying to sell it as a as a five star resort. I think Kelly said you call it a, a three star home. But three just get yeah, three and a half. Get like accurate, good photos and get some videos and you know For sure. Show off what you got to show off, man. So Jeff, you have a unique marketing style as well where your room rentals and you have your one bedroom, one bath cottage as well, which is a, a private uh, unit, but you reach out to every tenant lead that comes in on Furnish Finder, whether it's a match or not a match. So how does that work out for you? Uh, even if they put, you know, they're traveling as a family with two kids, you know, do you reach out to them as well? Um, I do because I, I realize since every room over here is, uh, you know, you, you, you have a, you got your TV in the bed and then you've got your, uh, you know, you got, you got a private lock. I've realized these people are only going to stay here for a month or two months, three months, something like that. And everybody is flexible enough. I'm like, what the heck? I, this is a business. I don't want vacancies. So I just think, why not? I'll just kick it out to the person and, I have to say, I, I've sent a lot of flat emails. I mean, a lot of response, a lot of me sure. reaching out to people through Furnish Finder and just, you know, no response. Yep. I just but, view it as they're not interested. You know, I don't take it personal or anything. Yep. It's a, it, it's it, ultimately the, we're running a company. It's sales and sales is just a numbers game. So all we're doing is just finding the right match. Um, you're not trying to oversell anything. You're just trying to say, hey, uh, you're looking for something and I'm providing a service for you. And that's it. If it works, it works. Um, I haven't done any pets yet. I, I feel like pets would cross the line with having. Yeah. With four bedrooms, that would be a little tough. Yeah. And having multiple guests. I just don't mm -hmm. want to do that, but yeah. A hamster. You would accept a hamster maybe. <laughs> I, I honestly would probably accept a cat in a, in a room. Interesting. <laughs> That, yeah, would, but you gotta, that would be the last one that Katie and I would probably work with. We'd go for dogs. I'm terrified first. of cats. I'm terrified <laughs> of cats and I hate ice makers. Even though you That's, own a I, cat. I look at a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> terrified of cats and I hate ice makers. Because they break? <laughs> the, all the, they do I, is break. That's all they do is break. <laughs> yeah, the ice makers? Yep. Yep. So, Jeff, what have you found as far as is important in your in your four-bedroom home room rentals for private spaces and for shared spaces, what do you make sure are go-tos for each of those areas? Um, all the beds are the same size. Um, running, running any, you know, anybody who's running multiple bedrooms in any property, just make your life easy and just everything is a whatever size bed you want to work with. And then you can inter interchange all your sheets. Um, basically, everybody needs the basics. Um, the, the bed, the dresser, a decent sized closet and a television. Every, I was surprised how much everybody in this particular market wanted a smart TV in their own bedroom. Mm -hmm. So I got them all that, um, people need to be comfortable, um, because we're up here in Indiana and this is an older home. As soon as people had an issue, I, you know, I've got ladies that are coming up. They're Islanders. I, I had one gal from Jamaica. Um, as soon as she, yeah, as soon as she was, uh, you know, it was cold. I'm like, I show up the next day. It's on me. Here's a, you know, here's a little heater for your bedroom to make That's sure thoughtful. that you take care. Yeah, I think that people want to be seen and they want to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. We're in the we're in the hospitality business, mm -hmm. big time. And. And we want to treat people the way ultimately that we would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in a way where we are kind of getting a bit of a premium mm -hmm. from our guests Yep. and I think that our guests should be taken care of in that, in that sense. So, and that's how you get your good reviews and that's how people feel, 
you know, loved and cared for. And they're willing to tell their other nurses like, Hey, this is a great space to come and stay. Um, I like your hospitality post on your signature for your email by Booker T. Washington. Those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. That's a great saying. What does that mean to you? Well, you know, you know, when we were chatting before Kelly, I mean, Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was a a pastor for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I spent um, 20 years of my life basically in the humanitarian services and in the nonprofit world, helping to start different nonprofit groups and, um, did a, I've done a ton of um, international uh, humanitarian work. So, I mean, that's what it means. I find that in the end, the, I mean, the bottom line for us, we're, we're all in, it, we all have to make a living. But if we're just in this business or we're trying to run a company just to make money, that doesn't fulfill our soul. And what I have found is really the best I mean, really the best connections are taking care of helping, helping people. So For that's sure. what that means. The other thing is, you know, it, it's not difficult to succeed in, in a, in a business today. If you're just, if you're just honest, just, just be kind and honest and tell people what you can do and be fair with them. And if you make a mistake, just own the mistake and then you go, Hey, how do, how do I fix it? What can I do to you know make this right? I love um, that. It always drove me crazy when I, you, a contractor would come to give you a bid on a remodeling project and they'll spend hours with you or like 30 minutes or an hour. And then you try to follow up. You're like, hey, how's it going? Are you sending that bid over? And at first they'll answer and be like, oh, yeah, it's, all, it's coming. It's on its way. And then eventually they just don't respond at all. I'm like, why? You spend an hour of your time. Yeah. At some point in my career, someone told me that you will get farther than 95% of people just by doing what you say you will do. Yes. And that means, you know, if you commit to following up with someone or I can't tell you how many times I talk to someone and they're like, okay, I'm going to send X, Y, and Z to you tomorrow. And I never hear from them again, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do, and it's none of it's crazy commitments, but simply following up with what you're going to do. And part of that, I think, is being realistic. And that's why, to circle back, I like that you you set the expectations, right? This is a three and a half star house. This is not, you're not gonna get fluffy Turkish towels with a warmer by the shower, right? Here's what it is, like you're setting the expectation and that's what that's what you're delivering on. So I think setting yourself up for success by not committing to things that you, you know, can't or won't do, right? Kelly, like that contractor probably overcommitted himself or herself. I've had um, that happen with so many contractors. Oh, it's yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Listen, hold, and then also just like, like. <laughs> not like, Jeff. Not Jeff. <laughs> no, it happens all the time. It's, all the time? It's, it's real life for us contractors. <laughs> I, I, and that's why I have to defend the contractors for a minute. We're so busy, and sometimes the quoting process is, is so arduous. Uh-huh. Okay, here's a let me tell you the behind the scenes. Good, I need it. I want to hear it. Okay, <laughs> the behind the scenes that contractor is also scoping out the, the, their clients to find out are you a serious good, client? Good. Right, 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 for sure. And and I have had clients that I have potential clients I've met with, and I'm like. Honestly, I'm not going to take the time and give you a bid. Do you tell them that, though? Are you honest with them so that they know where they stand? uh, Not that He wants to say yes. He wants to. I see it. He is after today. I'm going to challenge you. (laughs) I wish. But sometimes you're like, I just don't know if it's going to be worth, you know, working with this person don't it fall be- to the cold contractor culture you can do it. that honesty thing the i like it like tell them yeah. how it is for sure <laughs> yeah um anyway i want to go back and answer your other question you were saying like in the common spaces i went above and beyond in the kitchen and and just i bought anything that i thought anybody would want to use i i was like but i i also like to shop so you know i get that from my mom so uh, I bought, you know, blenders and toaster ovens and, and just tried to get nice pots and pans and really make it thinking if this was my home, what would I want to use? What would I want to cook with and, and utilize all, all that stuff? There's, 
I think we've all been to an Airbnb or something like that. I mean, I took my sons to Puerto Rico a couple of years ago, and I remember getting down to this Airbnb and opening the drawer going, bro, you literally gave me one fork. <laughs> there is one fork in here. And, and, you know, and like there was one baby, you know, cook pan like this big. Um, yeah, I was really frustrated. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. that and the it. other thing that I always like to have extra of is pillows and blankets. I mm -hmm. will always yes. have extra because I sleep with three pillows. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I get cold or like, I want one of like, I'm, I don't yep. care how frugal I am on a property. There will always be extra pillows and blankets. Yep. Mm -hmm. Me too. It's like, I, I either do two per room or sorry, four per room or three per room because, you know, depending on the size of the property, well, they can pull from other bedrooms if right. they need to as well. But, uh, and just as you can protect your mattresses, you can also protect your pillows, which mm -hmm. that's one thing that probably gets stained quickest, right? And is harder to wash and gets deformed and all that. So get mm -hmm. those nice uh, covers that you can just pull off and wash and put back on that are also bed bug proof, waterproof, all that yes. kind of stuff for yeah. sure. I, I'm kind of curious um, from your side. Now you ladies have been interviewing, you know, mm -hmm. this is uh how many episodes now? 20, 20 35. something. 35. 35. A zillion. Okay. <laughs> So after 35 episodes and you're meeting with lots of different people like like us out here that are just boots on the ground, um, what have been some of your like, aha, like, oh, I never thought about that? Sure. Oh, that's a good, that's a really good question. I appreciate this. We usually don't get questions thrown back at us. <laughs> uh, I, You know, I think it's trial and error a lot. I think a lot of times you buy some products and you're like, yeah, no, that wasn't what I had in mind. Uh, mattress covers is one of them. You know, I started with just the the toppers because they're easier to put on and off, but then they're also easy for guests to take off and leave off, mm -hmm. and then your mattress potentially gets stained. So I've switched it where I put a uh, encasement on and ask them not to remove it uh, unless it's absolutely ne necessary and put it back on as quickly as possible so that it protects the mattress. But then some guests that we've talked to even go ahead and they put the encasement and another encasement on top. It's like double protection. So that's one through trial and error. Uh, I'm going to pull out my favorite pots and pans, which is a brand called Tfal. And it's a, comes in a set. It's like $79 at Walmart and it's all the different pots you need. And it has both the strainer pour and a uh, spout. So you can treat it as like, if you need hot water for tea, then you can pour it out easily without making a big old mess. And it has just that lip, uh, uh, where the, the glass lid, it has different size strainers, like smaller holes and bigger holes. So you can, uh, without having to pull a strainer out and waste that, you can just hold the pot and dump it and strain it that way. So that's, that's probably my favorite item that I've found or one Let's of them. See, I've got, I have learned the value of rugs from our guests. Mm. Oh, okay. Rugs, not only for a style perspective, uh -huh. because they can refresh maybe a dated looking place very, very quickly, mm -hmm. but rugs are you can get rugs in a very, very affordable fashion, thanks to Amazon and Target and Walmart, especially if you're a good deal hunter. Mm -hmm. And if someone wrecks a rug, they're going to be a lot happier to pay $60, $100 out of their deposit versus having to get the carpet professionally cleaned after their carpet. Now, I have the carpets professionally cleaned at our properties like every 24 months or so, but it's much easier for me to order a new rug off of Amazon. I can even refresh the look a little bit if I want than to have to schedule something if it happens. Um, I've also learned the value of a good cleaner. Mm -hmm. Our cleaner has turned into like an additional, like I rely on her for so much. We have like a, a tote in each um, of our units for turnover supplies, yes. like the coffee pods mm -hmm. I leave out and the toilet paper. And we just have a list and she does everything. Not only does she clean, but she makes sure that there's, 
you know, all the furniture is where it needs to be. And she makes sure the beds are made how we like, and she makes sure that there's one roll of toilet paper in each bathroom, like all that little stuff. She does a lot more than just clean. So that for sure is also like, it's just kind of a weight off of our shoulders. That's a hard one that a lot of us don't find. So we've got time for one last question. So Jeff, I'm going to give you the option. Do you want to either talk about what you love most about midterm rentals or tell us about your different business endeavors in Fort Wayne, Indiana? Oh, that's really tough because you're putting it on me and I, you know, then I'll look like I'm like totally self-promoting if I. Well, I gave you the option. We, we like to promote uh, the stories of what people do on our show and how they're midterm rental hosts. Well, I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Here, here's what I will tell you. Um, I love, I got into the contracting about four years ago and I love contracting and I, I got into this space and what I've discovered is being a contractor actually fits hand in glove with getting into property management, rehabbing, because I get materials, I have crew guys that work with me, my new red roof over here, it's my crew that's over there. I get, so I get to refab, you know, re, refab any of my homes and work on them basically at wholesale cost. But so that's what I do. But yeah, I also do building consulting. So my other company is called 295 Living. And um, it's basically 295. I get it from, see, everybody knows the Bible verse, Jeremiah 2911. Mm-hmm. You know, that God has good plans for us for our future. But 29 verse 5 says, build houses and live in them. Mm, Yes, I remember that. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I started another business, 295 Living, and we actually do building consulting for anybody nationwide who's like starting from scratch. Like, how do Mm. I build a home? What are the steps involved? And that kind of thing. And we sell blueprints for homes. But yeah. But I'm answering both of your questions because I love midterm rental because the clients are easy. They're, they're easygoing. Yeah. Professional clients are hard to hard to beat, right? Mm-hmm. It's like they're there to take care of your property, uh, feel at home, and we're there to make sure they have a great stay. So it's like the perfect merge of of guests and landlord relationships. Yes, for sure. Well, we appreciate yeah. you being with us today, Jeff. Uh, if, if you want to connect with Jeff in regards to any questions you have or, uh, any of his businesses, check the show notes on YouTube. Uh, if you're loving our show, please don't forget, leave us a five-star review on wherever you get your podcasts. Appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone.